This is a song, a song of the sea. Here on the sun, the world is just for me. Splashing and spraying and singing along. This is a home, the sea and its song. Hi boys and girls, it's me again, Ashling. And we are going to have a very exciting environmental workshop. But before we do that, I'm going to have a little reminder of those warm-ups that we did in the last video, okay? So, before we do that, I just wanted to ask you, did you know how tall or how long a humpback whale can be? They can grow up to 18 metres, which is really, really long. I'm going to ask Rufus to stand up. Here's Rufus. And Rufus, how tall are you? Roughly 180 centimetres. <gasps> 180 centimetres. So if you multiply that by 10, that is the length of a humpback whale. 10 times, Rufus. So that's really pretty Massive. tall. Or pretty long, I would say. It's like double-decker bus really, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, very long. Okay, so we're going to remind ourselves of a warm-up. So before we get into up like a great big humpback whale, I would just like you to rub your hands together. Yeah, rub your hands together. And then again, arms, left arm, right arm, legs, top of your legs. And your tummy and your cheeks. Mm -hmm. Really squish your face. It's quite a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, very good. So I'm just going to go through it once just to remind you, and then I'd like you to join me the second time through. Okay? This was our warm up from the last video. So up like a great big hump back whale. Down, down, down to find the ocean trail. Swim, swim, swim. Splish, splash, splosh. Hello world, look, I am free. Now join in. Up like a great big humpback whale. Down, down, down to find the ocean trail. Swim, swim, swim. Splish, splash, splosh. Hello world, look, I am free. Excellent. So that's the warm up that might be appearing the next time you hear the story. So remember that. Then we also have our crabs. Remember? Yeah. Crab, crab, crab. crab, 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 crab. They might be appearing in the story. Mm hmm. Mm. So I have to remember that. Now, I think what would also be quite nice is to go through the song again just one more time. I will get my starting note, as ever. I'll sing it once on my own. And then I'm going to ask you to join in. I think it might be good if you join in and we sing it through twice, okay? Mm, okay, I'll sing it once. My name is Nelson and I'm a humpback whale. I swim round the world swishing my big tail. Swish. Swish, look fish, fish, now up to say hello to the world. My name is Nelson and I'm a humpback whale. I swim round the world swishing my big tail. Swish, swish, look fish, fish, now up to say hello to the world. One more time. My name is Nelson and I'm a humpback whale. I swim round the world swishing my big tail. Swish, swish, look fish, fish. Now up to say hello to the world. Excellent. So boys and girls, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello boys and girls and welcome back to our beautiful beach here in St Andrews. Now I think you've been learning a little bit more about Nelson and his dangerous dive. And Ashley's given you a little warm up earlier, but we're gonna recap over some of the little facts you've learned 
and teach you a little bit more about the life that he lives and the ecosystem that he lives in. So Nelson, he is a humpback whale and humpback whales can grow up to 18 meters long. That's up to 10 times the size of me. That's massive. But do you know how many double-decker buses that might be? Perhaps you can go and work that one out. But humpback whales, they aren't even the largest whales that we see on the planet. The blue whale is the largest animal that has ever lived and they can grow up to 30 meters long, which is astonishing. Now maybe you can work out how many double-decker buses that is as well. Now, there are many other different types of whales as well and they're all related to each other. So you've got things like killer whales and beluga whales and you've got narwhals with their big long tusks. But then you also have smaller members of the family like dolphins and porpoises and they're all related to each other. They're all warm-blooded mammals like Ashling told you and they all spout air out of their blowholes on the top of their heads. Most of the time all these whales they live in the big blue sea swimming around finding what they're going to eat diving deep 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 down to search for their prey but sometimes you find them in shallower waters and like Nelson you see Nelson swimming around a reef most of the time these reefs are made from corals and corals are wonderfully colorful things and you can see one in Nelson's dangerous dive remember this picture that you saw earlier and you'll see it again in the animated storytelling that we do later so all of these different colorful things they're all made by coral and in the coral you have all these different animals that like to live there you have fish that scuttle by and they're colorful and they attract all these large animals so you have sharks that swoop in and come to try and feed on the fish and then you have big graceful rays that glide over the reef happily and then you have other things like octopus with all of their legs sneaking through the coral reefs and hiding the little cracks waiting for something to eat but sadly because of global warming these coral reefs aren't always very healthy because of global warming and climate change they are actually losing their color and they're bleaching and turning white and once they turn white they start to die and all the animals start to leave because they don't have their safe home that they're used to but we've started to be able to work out ways to help bring these reefs back to life we use things called artificial reefs to help provide the safe home for these animals again and also to provide the opportunity for the corals to come back to life and to reclaim their home once more and get their colour back and become rejuvenated once more. So we use things like concrete blocks that are specifically designed to sink to the bottom of the ocean and help bring these ecosystems back to life. But we also have things like this ship here Sometimes these sink unfortunately in an accident but sometimes they have been lowered into the sea in order to create a habitat that the corals can live off and to give the animals a safe space to live. So now I think we're going to hand back over to the Marine Conservation Society and they're going to teach us a little bit more about fishing and coral reefs and everything else to do with this wonderful ecosystem that we're learning about. So you have just been hearing all about Nelson's Dangerous Dive. Nelson is a humpback whale. Any of you ever seen a whale or dolphin in the wild? So we're really lucky here in Scotland because we've actually got 20 species of whales and dolphins living here in our seas. Our smallest is the guy you can see in this picture, the harbour porpoise. This one's smaller than a human. Uh, we also see things like bottlenose dolphins, which you can see here, and we're going to look at those in more detail on the beach. And in this photo, you'll recognise these are orca or killer whales. I was lucky enough to see this incredible view when I was working on Shetland last summer. And what you can see on the surface is the baby orca. The proper name for a baby is a calf. And under the water where you see light blue, that's its mum. In this video, you can see a huge group, a superpod of common dolphins leaping around out of the water following this boat off the west coast of Scotland. And we even get humpback whales like Nelson here in Scotland, and we'll talk more about those later. The proper scientific name for whales and dolphins and their smaller relatives, the porpoises, is cetaceans. So maybe that's a new word for some of you. So let's start with some cool facts about cetaceans. 
So do you know what the biggest whale in the world is? It's this guy right here. Obviously not this one, this is just a very small model. But the blue whale. Now what's really incredible about blue whales is that they're actually the biggest animal that's ever lived. Yep, that includes any animal you're thinking about right now, including dinosaurs and maybe megalodons, whatever it is, you name it. Blue whales bigger than all of those. In fact, an average sized adult blue whale is 27 meters long. That's longer than two buses end to end. Huge, huge animal. Now, when we think about whales and dolphins, there are two main types. Some of them have teeth, uh, things like orcas, so we're talking killer whales famously, have teeth and they're predatory, they eat fish and maybe seals. I'm sure we've all seen nature documentaries. And some of them have something called baleen. And typically the ones with baleen are the really big whales, so things like the blue whale, but also humpbacks like Nelson in the book. Now what's baleen? It's kind of strange. Baleen's a bit flexible, it's made out of the same sort of material as fingernails or horns. And baleen is big plates lying next to each other inside the mouth of the whale. And basically what happens is the whale slurps in a big gulp of water. And as it squeezes the water out through those layers of baleen, they catch all of the food contained within the water. And usually that's quite small things. For something like a blue whale, we're talking about very small shrimps, things called krill. So the baleen kind of acts like a sieve. If you scooped up a load of water, the water would all fall away, go out of the baleen, and the shrimps would all be left behind. But Nelson is a humpback whale. We actually get humpback whales here in Scotland, all around our coasts. And in the last few years, over winter, there have been humpback whales who can be seen fairly regularly on the coast from, from around Fife. Which is pretty exciting, so maybe you guys have been lucky enough to see them. Now, I'm very lucky because a few years ago I was working as a scientist, way far away in the Pacific Ocean. And whilst I was there, I had the incredible opportunity to be able to swim with humpback whales. And so I'm going to show you a little video and I really want you to listen because this humpback whale was singing very, very loudly and it was an incredible experience, which I think maybe you'll enjoy as well. to learn a little bit more about some smaller cetaceans who live here in Scotland and also to think about one of the ways in which you guys can help to tackle this problem about plastic in our seas. This is a model of a bottlenose dolphin. A bottlenose dolphin is a type of cetacean that you might have seen because there's a quite a famous pod who lives not far from Aberdeen and can be regularly seen hunting and fishing and leaping out of the water there. Cetaceans like this bottlenose dolphin are really interesting because they're a bit like humans. They are very intelligent and they live in family groups. This model is about two metres long, but bottlenose dolphins can reach up to four metres long. In fact, the ones we have living here in Scotland are some of the biggest in the world, and that's because they need to keep warm in our cold seas. This model of a bottlenose dolphin is only about two metres long. Nelson, in the book, is a humpback whale. They can reach 19 metres long. So just imagine for a second that the head of Nelson, the humpback whale, is just where the head of our dolphin is here. And I am going to walk to show you where 19 metres are. So you can see where the tail of a humpback whale would be if I had a life-size model on this beach. So this shows you just how huge a humpback whale like Nelson can grow to be. We've come here today to do a beach clean. If you would like to take part in a beach clean, that would be amazing. 
definitely don't do a beach clean without an adult. We've got loads of brilliant advice about how to do a safe beach clean on our website. Just look up Beach Watch. But if you'd like to know what's involved, we just need some simple kit to keep you safe. Definitely some gloves. This is because the litter, of course, is dirty. We don't know where it's been. We want to keep you safe. A litter picker is a good idea. It will make life easier for you. It'll make it easier to pick up the litter. It's good to have a first aid kit. You definitely need a bag to put all the litter in so you can take it away from the beach. And we would love it if you could take part in our litter survey, which I'm going to explain in more detail. You just need to print the form off from our website, pop it on a clipboard and bring a pen or a pencil so you can fill it in. That's everything, let's get started. So have any of you taken part in a litter pick? If so, thank you so much because any litter that you take away from the beach is helping wildlife, animals like Duffy or like Nelson. So let's have a look at the sorts of litter we're finding on this beach. Lots of drinking containers, cans, bottles, this sort of drinking container as well. We're also finding quite a lot of straws. Unfortunately, we find several on this beach. We also find fishing litter, bits of rope like this. And we've learnt from Nelson's dangerous dive how bad this can be. So now I'm going to tell you about a project called Beach Watch. We'd love for you to get involved. This is a way in which you can help animals like Nelson the humpback whale or Duffy the turtle. When you take part in Beach Watch, it's a beach clean with a bit of a difference. So we don't just ask you to pick up the litter, we ask you to write down what you find just on a simple survey form. And it's the information you're collecting that really has an impact. Because unfortunately, as anyone who's taken part in beach cleans regularly knows, if you clean up the litter, it does just come back. But the data you collect provides the evidence that we need that supports all of our work to bring about real change for our oceans. Things like changing the law to stop plastic from getting into the sea in the first place. This includes laws like the plastic carrier bag charge that we learned about last time. And also in Scotland, uh, we can't buy plastic cotton bud sticks anymore. The trouble is people were flushing them down the toilet and we were finding lots of them on beaches. So they're now made of cardboard, much better. We've also excitingly got something called a deposit return scheme coming in in Scotland. And that means that when people finish using a drinking bottle or a can, they can post it back into a machine, a bit like a vending machine, and get a little bit of money back when they do their recycling. And we really think this is going to stop there being so much plastic, especially bottles on our beaches. So you'll recognise these two. Firstly, our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon the leader of our government, and also a leatherback turtle who we met last time. And here we are meeting Nicola Sturgeon so that we could talk about changing the law. In the Whilst it would be great for you to do a beach clean at any time of the year, if you're watching this in September, then we would love for you to take part in the Great British Beach Clean from the 18th to the 25th of September. If you take part during that week, you're, you're taking action in cleaning beaches at the same time as people are doing the same all around Scotland, all around the UK, and in fact, all around the world in an international coastal cleanup. So it's really exciting to be part of this global action. So once you get home from the beach, don't forget the all important step to input your data, because it's only with that information that we can then hopefully influence policy change to tackle marine litter before it gets into the sea. So last time, you might remember that I challenged you to think about what types of single-use plastic that you use that maybe, maybe you could use fewer of so that you're impacting the environment less. So I just thought I would show you the sorts of things that I use to use less single-use plastic. Now, this is what I tend to take with me if I'm going out and about for the day. Very simple, a water bottle, a refillable water bottle. We really don't need single use plastic water bottles. We don't need to buy water bottles every time we need some water. One of these will save you money and also you'll be helping the environment. I also take 
and reusable straw with me. Maybe some of you have got these. This just means that I don't need to use a plastic straw every time I want to use a straw. Very, very simple. Of course, you can get different types. You can get paper ones or bamboo ones as well. This is what I use. So that's just some examples to get you thinking about more things that maybe you can swap so that you don't need to use so much single-use plastic. Because remember, if we all use less single-use plastic, there'll be less plastic going into the sea, less plastic on the beaches. So today we've looked at lots of things. Hopefully you might feel inspired to take part in a beach watch, beach clean and litter survey. That would be brilliant. Your safety is always the most important thing to us. So this year, beach cleans won't be as big as in the photo. It will probably just be you and your household, some of your family and a few friends. Keeping it nice and small, but you can still have a big impact. Go to our website, the Great British Beach Clean, and you can find lots of information about how to make your beach clean as safe as possible. Next time, we're going to be looking at our last book, Marley's Tangled Tail. We'll be focusing on puffins and other seabirds. And I'm going to be inviting you to come with me on two exciting journeys. We're going to be looking at an exciting Scottish seabird island. But also we're going to go on a journey halfway around the world to the Pacific Ocean. And I'm going to be thinking about how the plastic that we use in Scotland might also be impacting amazing wildlife in different places around the world. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye for now. This is our song, the song of the sea, of the sea.